This video is about similarity, congruence, and proofs. Now in this problem, we are given these two planes that are perpendicular to one another, and uh, we are given these two lines that are parallel to each other. The line RS is at the intersection of the two planes. Okay, based on this information, which lines could be perpendicular to RS? Check all that apply. Um, what about EA? Sure, EA could be perpendicular to RS, all right, meaning a 90 degree angle. That's possible. Okay, what about um, ER? Well, clearly ER is not perpendicular because look how far it is over to the side. All right, point E is not above point R. So they're not perpendicular. So that's going to be a no. Um, what about EF? Well, here's EF right here. There's no way that's going to be perpendicular to RS. So that's going to be a no. Okay, what about uh, FG? Sure, FG, right? This is FG right here. That could definitely be perpendicular to RS. It is possible. And then what about FS? Again, point F is definitely not above point S, all right? They're not lined up. All right, point F would need to be like over here somewhere to be uh, to have a shot at being perpendicular. So that's going to be a no. Okay, so there you go. Okay, line JM intersects GK at point N. Obviously, which statements are true about the figure? Check all that apply. Angle G N J. All right, so here's angle G and J is complementary to angle J and K. Okay, J and K is right here. Um, the correct word here would have been supplementary. These two angles together make 180 degrees. They make a straight line together. So they are supplementary. Complementary means they add up to 90 degrees. Like if this is angle A and this is angle B, if this is a 90 degree angle in total, A and B would be complementary. So these are supplementary, so that's false. Okay, angle MNL. M N L is complementary to angle KNL. KNL. Yes, these are complementary. See how they both are here uh, inside of a 90 degree angle? So yeah, there that's true. Angle MNG. Okay, MNG is complementary to angle G and J. G and J. Again, these are supplementary. They make a straight line. They make 180 degrees. They are not complementary. So that's false. Angle K and J. All right, mm -hmm. so K and J is supplementary to angle M and L. M N L. No, that's going to be false. Um, see how there's this gap in between them, in between the two angles? Uh, if it weren't for that, then they'd be supplementary. But um, there's a space, there's an empty space in between these two angles, so they are not supplementary. Okay, one more. Angle G N M. G N M is supplementary to angle J and K. Okay, J and K. Well, that's actually true, even though they're not touching. Um, this is 90 degrees, 
and uh, these are vertical angles so this is also 90 degrees so they do add up to 180 so they are supplementary okay so these are the two that are true so in this problem we are given that line well segment NM all right shown here in blue is parallel to PO also in blue and we're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 so we're given the blue stuff and then we're supposed to prove that LM is parallel to NO we're supposed to prove the red part is true so we're given the blue we're proving the red um, but ultimately we're going to be asked for the reason for step number four so um, the two li blue lines are parallel that's given then uh, angle two is congruent to angle three those are alternate interior angles so that's why that's true and then uh, angle one is congruent to angle three that's that was given so then all of a sudden we're told that angle one is congruent to angle two all right so how do we get from this information to that statement well we can look at this as either the substitution property or the transitive property I will be in trouble if both of those answers are there but since it's only the transitive property I'm safe um, when you uh, when you only have two things that are being uh, compared to each other the transitive property and the substitution property can look identical alright so luckily it, uh, substitution is not one of the choices now let me show you why this is the transitive property the transitive property is the one that says um, if a is equal to B and B is equal to C then a is equal to C <coughs> excuse me I tried to pause the video before I sneezed but I didn't make it so when you have a train a chain like this a equals B B equals C and then a is equal to C okay the beginning equals the end that's the transitive property so let me show you why that's what's happening here we have um, okay we have angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 okay so angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 oops I forgot the angle symbol okay so that's this statement and then we have angle 3 is congruent to angle 1 alright I know I'm reading it backwards but it just makes it easier to follow what I'm doing angle 3 is congruent to angle 1 so by the transitive property we should be able to say that the first one is congruent to the last one so I should be able to say angle 2 is congruent to angle 1 which is the same as what we have right here okay so transitive property that's my final answer kabam alright if you said the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem that would be a way of saying that uh, well that's just plain what they have on the next step so it can't be this step because it's right here anyway let's move on alright look at this one um, a and B are parallel E and F are parallel what is the value of Y so we have a lot of parallel happening here so I'm gonna go through and mark all of the angles that are the same so um, these angles right here would be corresponding angles and then these would be vertical angles okay so they would also be congruent um, but then also these would be corresponding angles alright because um, A and B are parallel that makes these corresponding angles as well so those are congruent and then um, then uh, looking here these are corresponding angles regardless if you look this way or if you look this way these are corresponding angles 
and then we have vertical angles. So all eight of these angles are equal to each other. Okay, and then we have the other angles are all equal to each other. So the, these blue angles are all equal. Okay, now the blue angles and the red angles are supplementary. So what do we have? Um, we have uh, x plus 1. You know what? Let me color code this. x plus 1 is a red angle. Um, y is a red angle. So those should be equal to each other. And x minus 3 is a blue angle. Okay, so these two red angles are equal to each other. And then the, uh, the blue angle is supplementary to the red angles. In fact, okay, what's the value of y? So, let's start with um, the x minus 3 and the x plus 1. Okay, we have a blue angle and we have a red angle. These two should be supplementary. I'm starting with these two because it's all x's. When I get to this, I have x's and y's, so it's going to be impossible to solve that equation. But if I make an equation out of these, that's going to be doable. So the, the, um, the blue angles and the red angles are supplementary, so they should add up to 180. So this is an equation I can solve. Combine like terms, so I've got 2x and then negative 3 and 1, so that's negative 2, is equal to 180. Add 2 to both sides, so that's going to give me 2x is equal to 182. Divide by 2 on both sides, so x is equal to 91. But we're supposed to find the value of y. So if x is 91, I can substitute 91 in right there. So now I've got 91 plus 1 is equal to y. So that's 92. So y is 92. Boom. OK. All right, parallel lines cut by transversal. What is the value of y? Well, let's do the colors again. All right, these are corresponding angles. So they, they will be congruent. And then we have the vertical angles. All right, vertical angles are congruent, so those will be congruent. So all of these red angles are congruent, which means 80 must uh, be congruent to angle Y. So it uh, so y must equal 80. Okay. A flow chart proof contains a set of sentences explaining the steps needed um, to reach a conclusion. Um, what am I supposed to? I don't know, is this, true or, is this true or false? I'm missing some directions here, but this is a false statement. A flowchart proof doesn't have to have sentences. Okay, it uses inductive reasoning to prove a statement. Uh, not necessarily. It uses a visual representation of logical flow of steps needed to reach a conclusion. Yeah, that's what a flow chart proof is, a visual representation of the logical flow of steps. Mm -hmm. It contains a table with a logical series of statements and reasons that reach a conclusion. No, a table, so that's like a two column proof. So I guess this was a multiple choice question because that's the only one, that's what it is. 
Okay, so a flowchart proof looks something like this. Notice it doesn't have any, uh, there's no sentences. Um, you do give justifications to go along with your, your flow. As opposed to a two column proof which looks like this. So the word table refers to a two column proof um, which is not what a flowchart proof is. Okay, given that ray EB bisects angle CEA, which statements must be true? Check all that apply. Um, the word bisects means cut in half. All right, bisects means cut exactly in half. So they're saying that this ray is bisecting the angle that it's in. That means that these two angles on either side are exactly 45 degrees. So keep that in mind as we answer these questions. So the measure of CEA is equal to 90 degrees. CEA is 90 degrees. Well, that's definitely true because we're given the 90 degree angle right there. Okay, the measure of, let me get my colors ready, the measure of angle CEF okay so CEF is the straight angle is equal to the measure of angle CEA okay so that's uh, angle CEA plus the measure of angle BEF okay uh, BEF this is BEF yeah that's definitely not true Okay, CEA is a straight angle, so we need two angles that add up to 180 degrees. The green angle is 90 degrees, um, but then this purple angle is bigger than 90 degrees, so that's going to be more than 180. Uh, so, that, so these two are going to be more than angle CEF, so that's false. Okay, what else? The measure of angle CEB, okay, CEB is twice as big as the measure of angle CEA. So here's angle CEA. Um, yeah, that's obviously false because angle CEB is only 45 degrees. All right, does 45 degrees, whoops, does 45 degrees equal 2 times 90? Because that's what uh, the measure of angle CEA is 90. So does 45 equal 2 times 90? No. All right, the small angle doesn't equal double the big angle. That makes no sense. Okay, so forget about that. All right, the measure of angle BEF is 135 degrees. So here we have B, E, F. Well, this has got to be 90 degrees because the other one is 90. So um, 90 and then um, the 45 degrees. So B, E, F is this. So it's 90 plus 45, which is 135 degrees. So that's true. Okay, CEF is a straight angle. Uh, yes, CEF is a straight angle. Okay, um, angle AEF is a right angle. So AEF, yes, that has to be a right angle because the other angle that's adjacent to it is a right angle. Okay, so they all have to be true except for the second one and the third one. Great. This one is so silly. We have parallel lines cut by a transversal. What's the value of D? Well, uh, these are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So D is 125. Done. What was that, five seconds? All right. Watch this very carefully. This problem is a little bit confusing because of the uh, the two transversals that are uh, 
both involved here. First of all, uh, focus your eyes on, okay, of course we got the parallel lines, um, but let's focus on one transversal at a time. So for, for now, look at this transversal. So ignore everything else. So parallel lines cut by a transversal. Um, so what I have here are alternate interior angles. So if this is 79, then this angle is 79. All right, so hopefully you will agree with me that this is gonna be 79 right here. So now you have to switch your brain and look at the parallel lines cut by the other transversal. Hopefully in this form, you can see that this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles, again. So um, these angles should be congruent to each other. So let me erase these marks so you can see better. Um, so these angles should be equal. So that means the 6x plus 1 angle should equal the sum of these two angles, all right? Because that's what this angle is. It's the 79, um, it's the 2x plus 10, and the 79 together. So this is our equation. So I have 6x plus 1 is equal to 2x plus 89. All right, I'm just combining these like terms. Let's subtract 2x from both sides. So that's going to give me 4x plus 1 is equal to 89. Let's subtract 1 from both sides. So that's going to be 4x is equal to 88. Let's divide both sides by 4. That's going to give me x is equal to 22. Okay, so that should be the answer right there. Boom! Okay, given that we have these parallel lines cut by the transversal as shown, we're proving that angle 4 is supplementary to angle 6. So, um, yeah, the lines are parallel. We know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 6, all right? Because of what? Um, well, these are alternate interior angles. All right, that's what these are called. So this is going to be the alternate interior angle theorem. Some other possibilities uh, to keep in mind are, um, let's see, what about corresponding angles? What about um, vertical angles? Um, corresponding angles are like this. So hopefully you can see why those are alternate interior. Corresponding angles are like angle three uh, and angle seven. Those would be corresponding angles because they're, they're in the exact same position. Okay, vertical angles are like angle three and angle two. All right, whenever two lines intersect, the angles that are right across from each other are always equal. These are called vertical angles. Okay, um, but what we had this time was uh, angle three and angle six. These are called alternate interior. All right, so just know that vocabulary. And that was the last question.